Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. So in my previous video, I had discussed with the concept of uh, basics of uh, antenna parameters and uh, introduction to antenna with respect to the radiations. I've tried to explain the concept of antenna. So those who have not seen that video, please go and watch it. It is available in the playlist only just before this video. So in the previous video, I had concluded with one note that to represent the radiation pattern or the antenna field pattern, we require some parameters, right? In that we have already discussed with the HPBW, FNBW, that is half power beam width and first null beam width. What do you mean by that with respect to the field pattern? We have some more uh, parameters. So the first one is that we are going to discuss in this video that is called as beam area and directivity. Okay, directivity and beam area we are going to be discussing in this video. So stay tuned, watch till end and whatever, whatever are the expressions which I have written here, listen it. Uh, if you are making any notes, uh, please write it down and uh, don't worry, this notes I'm going to be circulating in the video's description also. So go and access it. Okay. So this is our today's concept that is first starting with the beam area. So what do you mean by beam area with respect to that? What, what is the formula? Uh, attached and uh, with respect to the spherical coordinate system how it is getting related everything we are going to be discussing so firstly before starting the concept of beam area you should be knowing one thing that this is represented in a three dimensional uh, uh, space and uh, it is uh, represented using the spherical coordinate systems whatever the parameters mentioned in spherical coordinates that is r theta and phi based on that the beam area is defined and uh, the whatever the area produced with respect to the spherical coordinate system parameters that is represented in terms of uh, figure which is shown here with respect to the angle some of the angles which is given as one angle is phi equal to zero that angle is called as azimuth angle and uh, when theta equal to zero when theta equal to zero what angle is produced that is called as polar angle and r sin theta d phi and whatever the area which is mentioned here that is called as d theta or the major lobe area okay so in this way the figure is drawn with respect to r radius angle theta and polar angle angle phi okay azimuth angle and polar angle along with the radius this is the figure so just uh, go through this figure once how it is drawn you see here with respect to d theta and r d phi so area in simple words da that is this shaded region for the shaded region the area is given by r sin theta d phi into r d theta okay so why d phi into r d theta because here you see here this is the d theta and this is r d phi so opposite to that we are having d phi and r d theta so that's why you should be writing like this so r r gets multiplied so it would be r square sin theta d theta d phi simply the sin theta d theta d phi is simply called as the beam area okay so that area you should be represented in terms of d omega this is omega symbol not ohm symbol d omega and this d omega is the variable beam area with respect to this we should be doing the integration and finding out the actual beam area that is omega suffix a so here d omega is a solid angle expressed in terms of steradians of square degree okay note that 4 pi is the solid angle of a subtended sphere okay so one steradian is equal to one radian square that is represented as 180 divided by pi the whole square that is in terms of degree it is represented as 3282.8064 degree square so these these things are not there in your syllabus just i have mentioned you in order to know it okay so if for one, one steel radian it is this much then how much it is for 4 pi steel radians that is given by here here whatever answer you got just multiply it by 4 pi that is for a solid sphere angle the total angle is 41253 point something so that's not i have not mentioned that the roughly you could be mentioning this angle for a solid sphere okay yeah so beam area or beam solid angle omega suffix a of an antenna is given by the integral of the normalized power pattern over the sphere okay so in this way the uh, beam area is represented or it is also called as beam solid angle 
so that is omega a is equal to double integral why double integral because i have told you we are using the spherical coordinate systems that is d theta and d phi so that's why uh, we are using two integrals one is from 0 to 2 pi that is for uh, d theta and d 0 to pi that is for d phi okay integral double integral of 0 to 2 pi 0 to pi pn where pn is the normalized power pattern with respect to the function of theta comma phi into d omega okay where this d omega is equal to d theta d phi okay where pn is called as normalized power pattern so th this is the basic uh, formula for an beam area approximately beam area uh, omega a is uh, nearly equal to theta hp phi hp okay that is half power of angles theta and phi where this theta hp and half uh, phi hp are the half power beam widths in which the two principal widths uh, are containing that is theta and phi so this is the basic formula which you need to be remembering for a beam area so please note this down now let us get to the concept of radiation intensity so radiation intensity is given with respect to the normalized power pattern only that is uh, pn of function theta comma phi that is equal to u of theta comma phi divided by u of theta comma phi max power radiated from an antenna per unit solid angle is called as radiation intensity so this is the u of theta comma phi is the solid angle which is mentioned here okay so this is the simple formula for radiation intensity so note it down So now you see here, the normalized power pattern can also be expressed in terms of ratio of radiation intensity that is uh, u of theta comma phi as a function of angle to its maximum value. That is whatever the normalized power pattern is uh, generated with respect to the beam area that is uh, using the double integration and all that can be expressed in terms of the radiation intensity which you have just defined right now that is with respect to the solid angle u of theta comma phi as a function of angle to its maximum value so whatever the maximum value generated that would be somehow somehow equal to the normalized power pattern with respect to that it can be expressed okay so next is beam efficiency beam efficiency is calculated by in terms of epsilon m okay beam area is equal to uh, omega uh, suffix capital M plus omega suffix small m where omega suffix capital M is called as major lobe and omega small m is called as minor lobe the addition of that is simply represented as beam area this is the equation in which uh, same beam area equation but which is represented in terms of major and minor lobes in the power pattern okay so efficiency is just the uh, difference or the division between uh, omega m divided by omega a that is uh, uh, the major lobe uh, beam area divided by the actual beam area is uh, called as efficiency this is the definition of beam efficiency now let us get to the concept of directivity and gain so directivity is measured in terms of uh, power only that is a uh, function of power of theta comma phi max divided by average power of the function theta comma phi so this is the general definition of a directivity so the directivity of an antenna is equal to the ratio of maximum power density so this is the power density here p of theta comma phi max to its average value over the sphere as observed in the far field okay so here this is that far field which is mentioned um that is equal to d times u naught so here whatever the area in which it is concentrated based on that the pattern is drawn and with respect to that pattern the whatever the surface which is uh, drawn out in the outer way from that surface the directivity would be getting calculated okay so how it is given by you see here d is equal to p of theta comma phi max divided by 1 by 4 pi double integration of p of theta comma phi into d omega okay why 1 by 4 pi the beam area we have seen that for a solid sphere it is uh, 4 pi stay radians okay so that's why it is getting divided by 1 by 4 pi because we are taking the integration so that's why it would be 1 by 4 pi so bring this uh, to upward side so it would be d is equal to 4 pi divided by double integration of p of theta comma phi divided by p of theta comma phi max into d omega so solve this so this is actually the uh, normalized power power pattern 
so just uh, substitute that and the normalized power pattern this is the definition of uh, beam area so that is equal to omega a so therefore the directivity is equal to finally 4 pi divided by omega a where 4 pi is the uh, angle of a solid sphere divided by the area in which the uh, in which the in, from that solid sphere whatever the area which is concentrated that is called as beam area so this is the basic expression of a directivity so here it is mentioned here directivity is the, is the ratio of area of sphere 4 pi steridian to the beam area okay so note that smaller the beam area larger is the directivity so how much small the beam area is that much uh, the larger is the directivity because it is inversely proportional to each other idealized isotropic antenna has the lowest possible directivity so what uh, in which antenna it has the lowest directivity that is the idealized isotropic antenna that is the directivity in this case for this it is equal to 1 so this is all about directivity and this is the gain you see here the gain of an antenna is an actual quantity less than the directivity d due to the ohmic loss in antenna so it is represented as uh, d is equal to 4 pi by uh, omega a this is the directivity right gain is represented as g is equal to k times d okay where k is the antenna efficiency factor and d is the directivity of the uh, antenna that is represented in terms of beam area right so the simple expression for gain is equal to k into d now this is for if you consider one reference antenna and one uh, uh, antenna which is under test if we have two antennas uh, connected uh, simultaneously in uh, one particular radiation and it, the radiation is happening between those antenna with respect to that how to calculate gain they have given by this formula okay so this is not there in your syllabus but just for your reference i have mentioned it so note it down that is given by g is equal to p max of antenna under test that is aut divided by p max of reference antenna into the gain of the reference antenna okay so whatever the reference antenna whatever gain is produced that you should be keeping it okay it has one constant value so that's why we know it's not we are not required to calculate it so yeah this was about gain of an antenna and uh, that's all for the video guys uh, starting from beam area and uh, in which uh, how it is represented in terms of what system it is represented and uh, with respect to expression everything we have I've tried to cover in this video beam area and directivity along with the gain of an antenna so hope you understood it that's all for the video guys in the next video we are going to be discussing with the concept of antenna aperture and the relationship between antenna aperture and beam area okay we have an expression one simple derivation that I've already done it in this notes. I'm going to tell you that in the upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, keep supporting us guys. Thank you.